Just so you know a little bit of the background and why this exists, it's a partnership that exists between Greenpoint School here, um, the church, Greenpoint Baptist Church, um, Kylie McGilvray and her business, which is Journey to Success for Mums, sorry guys, um, and, and that's why I think Kylie dragged me along, so at least the guys are represented, um, just so we can actually feel like that, you know, there's actually, we want to develop a community. We can stand together in a very strong partnership with the other partner being you in your parenting. So we can do this together, feel like we're doing it together, feel like we can learn from one another, feel like there's a strength about what we're doing in our parenting. I don't know about you, we've got four kids and there's a, such a relentless, relentless consistency about pairing. It is, it is a tough gig. I, I would say that probably from everything that I do, I reckon that'd be the hardest thing that I do, is, is the consistency of parenting it just doesn't go away it's there all the time um, you know you can work hard in whatever it is and you come home and you've got to be on your game because you're a mum or a dad and that's hard to do and for us to create a space like this that is a very proactive intentional um, piece in you know I want to I want to engage with the desire that I have to be the best dad or the best mum that I can be um, and I want to be really intentional about that I want to think about it I want to actually have some very clear plans and strategies about how we step in in the relationships we have in our home um, and the other part of that that partners with that that's just as important is actually believe it or not the way you lead yourself it's really hard to be a good parent if we don't lead ourselves first. So there's always a personal leadership aspect um, to even this environment to go, how can I lead myself in such a way that you know, I put myself in a healthy space so I can lead others? You know, I reckon that is even harder than being a parent. You know, I, I reckon out of people that I lead, I'm the hardest to lead out of anybody. It's just, just hard. And so that intentional piece to go, you know, I want to lead myself well and I want to lead my family well. That's the kind of environment we want to create. And that's why um, the school, the church, Kylie and I are staying together along with you, alongside you in your role as parents because we want to see healthy, happy and thriving families. Isn't that a beautiful picture? Really healthy, happy and thriving. Awesome picture. And we can have different degrees of that, but we want to move into that and want to support you in that, want to support each other. So even tonight, we actually learn from each other. So it's not really a seminar where you can come and listen and which you'll do some of that. Um, but it's more than that. It's engaging together in going, how do we, how do, we do this well? Um, so well done for being here because um, you're part of the solution to even people in this room. So, so well done. Um, I want to introduce to you tonight... Um, Kylie, Kylie McGilvray, if you haven't met Kylie before, um, she is just going to give you an overview of where we're going to go tonight because we're going to explore this topic of bullying, which is a really interesting topic to explore. So, Kylie, over to you. Thank you. So, let's talk about bullying. That's what we're here to talk about. So, what's the first thing, what's the first word that comes to your mind when you hear the word bullying? High school. Anything else? Mean. That came up on Friday, actually. That was one of the words. Any other words? Aggression. So we've got mean, high school, aggression. Anything else? Unfairness. I'd like to acknowledge tonight that this topic, bullying, brings up a range of emotions. And why is that so? is because I believe that deep within the heart of parents, we don't want our children to get hurt. Is that right? Yes or yes. We don't want our children to get hurt. And also, I believe too, that we don't want our children to hurt others. Yes or yes. Absolutely. So, I think as parents, there's a lot that we can actually do to help counteract bullying. I think the first thing we need to do is really have a clear understanding of what bullying is and what bullying isn't. I kind of liken it a little bit to 
the difference between the flu and a common cold. Now, I'm not a doctor, but we do have a doctor in the house. <laughs> my understanding of the flu is, is my experience of it secondhand. So how do you think, how can you experience the flu secondhand? My, my husband was very sick with the flu. Now, it wasn't just a bad cold. It wasn't what you'd call the man flu. It was the flu. He was in bed. He had raging temperatures. He couldn't really move his arms very often. He was very ill. So ill that he had to get a we had to get a doctor in to make sure he was going to make it. That's my idea of the flu. Very serious. It can even lead to death. Whereas a common cold... You know, yes, you've got a headache maybe. Yes, you might have a sore throat. and Yes, you might sound terrible. But generally, you can go about your day-to-day -day duties, generally. And, and it's not nice, but it's not the flu. And it's very similar with bullying. There's certain things that are definitely bullying and there's other things that are just part of everyday life. So, I think one situation would be, I don't know if this has happened to you, I'm sure it has, it happened to me growing up, but possibly you didn't get invited to the birthday party. Sometimes, I don't know about you, but as parents we say, well, we're going to have pizza or something, you can invite 10 children. So therefore, there's times where some kids miss out. And that's actually not bullying, that's part of life. There's sometimes there's a disagreement in the playground, a disagreement at work, a conflict of interest, and that's not necessarily bullying either. However, there are three things that I think that really stand out when we're looking at bullying, and it's something that you can remember to use when you're trying to work out, is this bullying or isn't it? And the first thing is there's a power imbalance. And this power imbalance is used for the negative. Now there's a power imbalance in my house now, it's a physical power imbalance. I'm now the weakest person in my family. Andy's stronger than I am. Jess is stronger than I am. And Josh is definitely stronger than I am. But praise God, that power imbalance is not used against me in any way. So a power imbalance can be physical. It can be social. It can be intellectual. It can be a number of things. So if there's a clear power imbalance and it's being used for the negative to cause harm, then that's a sign of bullying. The next thing is it's repetitive. It's happening over and over again. So if an incident is a one-off incident, it's actually not bullying. However, that doesn't mean it doesn't need to be dealt with. If there's been a mistreatment in the school playground, it gets dealt with. And the other thing to remember as parents, as a general rule, high school, Jane, how many kids per class? Roughly 25, and in primary school, how many kids per class? 25 and 30. Guess what? Teachers can't know everything that's gone on in that day. Not in the playground and not necessarily <coughs> even in the classroom. So if your child comes home and you're concerned, then you can go and tell the school your concerns. Because if you don't tell them, they may not know. They may know, but they may not know. So we've got, it's a power imbalance used in a negative way. It's repetitive. And the third one, there's an intentional harm. There's an intent to harm. Now, if you've read through Proverbs, there's a, there's a proverb that says, children naturally do silly things. You ever had that experience? And sometimes they can do something silly and cause harm, but there was no intent to harm. I remember when I was 10 years old, I have a twin brother, we used to get called Double Trouble, and we were at my grandmother's house, and we were asked to go get a loaf of bread out of the freezer in the backyard. So right at the backyard there was a freezer, I have no idea why there was a freezer in the backyard, but apparently there was. So we went down and we got the loaf of bread, and soon it became a football. So we're passing it back and forth down the yard, and then I passed the final pass, it was a really good pass, mind you, and it went straight through my brother's hands and straight through the window. Smashed. Was I in trouble? Yes. Did I mean to do it? No, I didn't. And my brother should have caught it. He really should have. <laughs> it really wasn't my fault. Well, maybe it was both of our fault. 
But it's really important to realise there's times where kids naturally do silly things. They cause harm, but there was no intent. But then there's times if they're that when it is bullying, they have actually mean to hurt somebody. So there's those three things to remember. So one of the things that we can do as parents is to make sure we use the term correctly because it gets thrown around a lot and, and we can, can even imagine that there's bullying everywhere. But the stats are that it's about um, 30%. One in three, I've heard one in four. And even at this school, it could be even lower than that. So it does happen, but it possibly doesn't happen as much as we think it happens. So that's something to remember. And it's always important to teach your children what bullying is and what bullying isn't. So they know what to do and they know how to deal with it. And Jane's going to come up now. She's the Deputy Principal of Greenpoint Christian College. And she's going to talk about Greenpoint's anti-bullying policy and their proactive approach. Thanks, Jane. Okay. Um, yes, as far as the school's policies go, we have to have a policy in place. It's a legislative requirement. However, we use that policy. The anti-bullying policy outlines what um, Kylie said, what it is, but also what it isn't. And it outlines the procedures that we put in place to um, deal with it and also to prevent it. Some of the things that we do to prevent bullying is education, and that's probably our best tool. So educating kids on um, respecting each other, also educating them on how to get along, how to understand that bullying is destructive, and that that's something that's not tolerated in our school. So we're very, proactive in that. We have programs throughout secondary school and junior school with um, our counsellors. We work very closely with our team of counsellors to put things in place so that we can prevent um, incidents of bullying. So some of those things would be um, Matt, we've got Matt Rosie, one of our counsellors. Some of the programs that you would use in junior school. Uh, we'll just run our marriage program. Yep. Uh, I know as part of the curriculum there's also each grade, <coughs> um, issues as part of the curriculum. We also run, uh, we have run uh, girls programs in year six schools. Mm -hmm. uh, we also run relationships programs in year six as well for boys and girls. Mm -hmm. and, uh, the girls and boys certainly work to that relationships by the way, relationships. Yeah. And something in secondary school that Matt has been involved with year seven with Rock and Water. That is a program where we especially target year seven boys and girls, both boys and girls can do the, or do the program. And that is the, the philosophy behind rock and water is a, a time to stand firm, stand up for yourself and also a time to go with the flow. And it's teaching kids about personal space, but also recognising those social cues in other people of when it's okay and when it's not okay. So that's something that we start very early in uh, Year 7 and all of our Year 7 students do that. Also we have a peer support program where we train Year 10 students uh, in the next couple of weeks who will be Year 11 next year and they meet with our students once a week for all of Term 1 and there's someone that they can go to as well. Sometimes kids might feel a little bit reserved to go to an adult so we're putting things in place so that they've got other people that they can talk to as well. What Kylie said before, we can't deal with what we don't know. So communication really is key. If things are starting to happen that you notice, um, it might be the odd comment that a ch your child makes. You think, hmm, okay, something's not quite right. You might notice a change in their behaviour as well. It's really important that we know those things because we might not necessarily pick up all of those uh, little quirky things that your kids do or don't do. So making sure that we know your, your concern about something and then we can investigate it. <coughs> Excuse me. We're actually trained in child protection and all of the executive, we've done advanced training in child protection. So we recognise those signs and we are able to conduct investigations to find out what is happening or what isn't happening. Um, we're experts. Okay, we are able to look at 
the whole situation and work out what it is. And it's often with the questions that you ask kids that you find out what is happening or what they perceive is happening. So that's something that's really important as well. One-off incidents, they're still dealt with and some of those one-off incidents can be really serious. And we have a discipline, uh, we call it behaviour management, procedure and process that we go through and it's a level process and then we're able to recognise individual mistreatments but then we're also able to identify if there is a pattern there as well. We talk to both parties, it's not the, the person that is the victim and the person that is the so-called bully that we ignore, we actually address and talk to both parties and often put in counselling for both parties so that we can help support the students through a, a challenging time that they might be, have, might be having. We also educate, particularly with cyberbullying, I know that that's something that a lot of parents are very concerned about. We have recently joined um, and we're known as an eSmart school, so we have government support and resources and also logins that parents can use um, if they're concerned so that they feel prepared and they've got resources on hand as well. So as we, we roll that out, we'll be able to give you logins. In um, the school, we also ha have an I Need Help box, which is an icon on our intranet page, where students, if they don't feel that they can say something, and it might be that it's happening to them, or it might be that it's happening to a friend, um, that's a, another place that they can report things to. Um, as far as within the school, the class teacher is the, is the best port of call straight off. And then if there are things that are escalating, you could go to a year advisor in secondary school and we've got Rachel who will be the year seven year advisor for next year. Uh, and then obviously the, the executive of the school as well. But we need to know whether that's an email or whether that's a phone call and they're things that we can get onto straight away and we do. We do. If we hear about something, we've got a team of people that work on it straight away. Are there any questions just about how or what or concerns? Okay. The anti-bullying policy and some of the steps of that are also in our the student diaries that students get in secondary school and that policy is also available on our um, website. So if, if you wanted to have a look through that policy, it does outline the way that we uh, respond to those things as well. Okay, thank you. Um, really wanted you to understand the, the school's perspective from an awareness point of view, so you're aware of the different things that are in place here at the school and also just what pathways are available for you. Um, to engage with someone if you're just not quite sure or you wanted to know what to do if something should happen.